It's a miracle. We're actually together okay. in the same room. Shout out to the House of AstraZeneca. Shout out to Pfizer. In any case, Dabba. Hey, William. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> we have so much to discuss. A new Eurovision season is here. Happy New Year. Thank you. And to you. Slave. Hey, happy New Year, my dear friends. And the rules of the 66th, 66th edition of the Eurovision Song Contest have leaked, or rather they were inadvertently uploaded. And in them, we see that pre-recorded backing vocals will be allowed again for the second year in a row. Shall we talk about it? Let's do that! Oh my goodness. Now, Devin, just to clarify, the rules say the accompanying backing track may optionally contain backing vocals. However, the backing track in question shall not contain one, lead vocals, aka you better sing yourself, two, lead dubs, and or three, any other vocals that would have the effect or aim at replacing or unduly assisting the lead vocals during the live performance on stage. Devin Adarimi with Weblogs.com, what do you think about the continuation of this rule from 2021? I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. You know, Eurovision has always been, you know, for like, certainly it's from the time Eurovision started, like, 66 years ago has always been setting the trends you know setting the trends of music setting the trends of performance and the fact that it's always a hundred percent live was the big test isn't it back in the day you know just especially now italy's one you kind of think that oh they may bring back the orchestra it's like no actually you can just mime your way through it I I'm a hold up Tell me, did Murnaskin have any assistance with pre-recorded backing vocals? No, they didn't. Did Barbara Pravi from France have any assistance with pre-recorded backing vocals? No, she didn't. Did second place Televo Ukraine have any assistance with backing vocals pre-recorded? No, but you're talking about the rankings here. Yeah, so what I'm saying is none of the top acts chose to use pre-recorded backing. We should stress that it is optional. The reason they introduced this is they wanted to create a, quote, sustainable content. Oh, yeah. So to sing live is not a sustainable well, measure. Before we get into that, let's just explain. So basically, during the pandemic, the EBU hoped that countries would bring smaller delegations. Also, it's cheaper for countries if they bring fewer people on their delegation. So they replaced a backing vocalist, or op rather, they had the option to replace backing vocalists with pre-recorded backing. So that's one of the motivations behind this. This has already existed for years, both at Melody Grand Prix in Norway and Melody Festival, Festival in Sweden. And so they were kind of taking a cue from that in a way. Um, yeah, I guess... And whilst I can still tolerate the idea for next year, because we're not clearly fully out of Corona. I mean, different yeah. countries, different stages. I just hope that Eurovision moving forward, 2023 onwards, goes back to 100% live. I just don't... The other thing is... This pre-recorded backing vocals allows you to cheat. Because what you do is you then pre-record and we don't... How do you even gauge how much is pre-recorded? So this is a good point. And this is where I get a little nervous. I would hope and I would think that, you know, the people in the sound room during rehearsals or after rehearsals can easily just turn down the lead vocalist and listen and see what is being played, the people behind the scenes. So they should be able to figure it out. I'm assuming they would have done checks. You would hope that, you know, in this process, there's a built-in mechanism, just as they checked the live on tape recordings to make sure they were done in a specific way, a certain number of times. You would hope they're doing that here. And I'm gonna, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt, and assume they are. Because um, it'd just be bananas if they weren't. But Devin, before we keep talking, let's actually look at what our readers are saying. I'm going to shout out to the most voted comments on the Weeblogs website. Hector says, please don't let this become a permanent rule. Amen, Hector. I'm, honestly, it needs to remain temporary. I think one thing that's annoyed a lot of fans is that there's this pattern of the EBU saying things are not permanent, but then they are permanent. For instance, Australia, who I love, I love that they're permanent, by the way. Um, that was first introduced as a trial. Now with this, it's introduced as a trial. And so people are like, hmm, if they say something to the trial, 
maybe it's not actually a trial. <laughs> it's it's like a soft easing, isn't it, into a permanent feature? <laughs> ESC one two three four writes: Everybody knew that the pandemic was an excuse for the Swedish mafia to do what they've been trying for years. Backing vocals can't save artists that can't sing. Cough Anton Awald. <laughs> You got me begging there. <laughs> that is so shit. You got me begging there. I guess my response would be that, um, again, the top artist in the placing did not use backing vocals to cover their lead vocals. And also, more to the point... You can't more use to... outcomes as justification. Well, no, but I can say this, and you know this for a fact, because you know all the artists every year. These are real artists, okay? These are not karaoke queens and kings, okay? These are real artists who want to show off their real talent. Like, I think a lot of artists would be embarrassed because it would be obvious to people, I think, or many people, if they were trying to mask their own voice. Like, if Barbara Pravi, in some parallel universe... Oh my god, the examples you keep throwing... Are... Okay, give me an example then. Fendi, let's work on that. So, let's work on Fendi. Let's right. work on... Just like what... Cleopatra. Ah! Army of lovers. Ah! I start a fire. Ah! She was doing the lead vocal. She did the lead vocal. TikTok. Um, what's her name? Albina sounded amazing. Albina. She sounded amazing. She sounded amazing, but how much of that was her? That was her. In the back, she did use her own voice on the backing, but that was to create an interesting effect. Are you An intoxicating, immersive yes. feel. Yes, she's everywhere. She's here, she's there. No one relied on backing vocals. Let me tell you why. Let me backing. tell you why I don't like this pre-recorded backing vocals. It allows you to cheat. Apart from the obvious cheating, which is Who? is it her? Is Who? it not her? No, no, Who? no. Who like, cheated? No, no. Who? What I mean is, apart from the obvious of is this person singing live or they're not singing live, what pre-recorded backing vocals allows you to do is pre-record all your vocals, pre-record those vocals that you're allowed to, and then still bring five other dancers. So it, it really allows you to expand. So you're for it, in that it lets you bring more dancers. No, what I'm saying is the idea of sustainability is fraudulent because... I see what you're saying. Do you see what I mean? People, you're saying people weren't actually using yeah. this rule to be so, more so sustainable. It, it actually then pressures you to do more. It creates an arms race. Yes. Oh, actually, a leg race, yeah, a leg an arm race. race, a body yeah, race. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so so it, it's not, it, it, we're trying to get Eurovision to be as level a playing field as possible. And what this does is it just skews the optics. Okay, that's a fair point. Now, I just want to stress that the rules say you cannot use this to attempt to replace or unduly assist the lead vocal. I think if they would provide a bit of transparency, transparency about how they check that, people would be more comfortable. Because I do understand how there's a lot of ambiguity. I do think of Fendi saying, and she sang great. So I don't know, some people in the comments have suggested that, you know, the big example. I don't think she was hidden. You could hear her voice very clearly. Fendi? Yeah, you could hear her. Mama, mama, tahari. Mama, mama, tahari. Yeah, you know what I say to that? I was not in the Netherlands. I was going to say that. I could hear my girl singing. <laughs> I was not in the Netherlands. Oh, well, look, this is what one of our readers says. Bella, very bad decision. In 2021, some countries already completely abused the rules. During the performances of Serbia, Bulgaria, Moldova, you could barely hear the actual singers because they were fully covered by backing vocals. Some countries will definitely take advantage of that to make it a full lip sync. Okay, I just gotta say. Uh, do, do you know what? Bella has a point. Bella, and, and I, of, uh, the lineup she's just pulled, Serbia, Bulgaria, Bulgaria. No, 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 no. Serbia did not have backing. We heard them in rehearsal. There was not backing. That was the three of them. No, they had backing. They did not have backing. They had they a backing track. They definitely That was them right. singing. You're kidding. I am not kidding. I will play you the rehearsal footage. We fit. <laughs> Here. Also, Bulgaria was singing. Oh, Bulgaria was Bulgaria live. Bulgaria was live. Moldova was... Well... I thought she was singing. I think maybe the mix... I think on the high note, there was some harmony going on. <laughs> You're like, no, there was just... I love my girl on the television. You've been sugared. Oh, no. <laughs> you have been sugared. Give me some sugar, sugar. bump. Bum, 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 bum. 
I keep this near and dear to me, right there. <laughs> I love that song. I love that she's still singing it um, at weddings, at New Wave. I'm girl's you gotta keep plugging, girl. Okay, but let's finish Bella's point. Also, the excuse, it would allow us... Oh, this is interesting. The ex Oh, this this is a very interesting Oh my god, part. there's a fly in my water. Also, the excuse that it would allow songwriters and producers to present their work as close as possible to their original composition is absolutely hilarious. Basically, it means that if a singer can't sing live, which happens, they'll still perform something as close as possible to the original thanks to playback. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and that's yes, a good point. It is ridiculous. That's a good point. An interesting point, though, songwriters have reacted and producers have reacted very badly to this. I've, I've been in touch, you know, yeah. the usual people we speak yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. None of them like this, um, which explains your point earlier. And the, you know, Barbara Pryby. Artists. Lana, yeah. Artists want to show their skill. Yeah. So they won't take up this option. But I, I do but think you know what, girl? If we had made it through one in 360, and we, were, we would be living for this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, can we pre-record our main as well? <laughs> Ain't nobody got to know. <laughs> no, but I do think for some smaller countries who don't have as much funds, we talk about this a lot. If you're, and the person, I won't say which Baltic country explained this to me, but a particular Baltic country's head of delegation told me, if you draw, or if they drew first half, first semifinal, as opposed to second half, second semifinal, it was a difference of like 20 or 30,000 euros for them, which for a small country, the oh, yeah, it's a big, because you know, if you're in the first half of the first semifinal, you have to arrive earlier for rehearsals. That's all those extra days of travel, food, expenses, etc. So for poorer countries, I think this does give them some flexibility. I think it's a minority of countries, right, that would actually need this, but it does give them flexibility. So in that sense, I buy sustainable to an extent. Not full on, but to an extent. Um, but again, and I don't want to sound like a broken record. For me, it's a moot point because I think the real competitors with the skills, they're not going to take this up anyway. So it doesn't, it's not an issue. Um, all right, let's... And, you know, it's... It, it, okay, I'm actually starting to agree with William the Adams now because, yes, because when I watched it, I, I wasn't in the Netherlands, but I was in Skopje and I was in, in the company of, you know, musicians and artists and stuff and... And they were like over my dead body. You know? mm. So so I think a lot of artists won't even take that up. But then yeah. what if delegations force you to? Well, there you go. TJ says, why only pre-recorded backing? Pre-recorded everything and turn the show into a lip syncing competition for all. And while we're at it, why actual singers put some holograms of animated oh, avatars you know on what? stage? Speaking <laughs> of that, I mean that's that's a whole new <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean the hologram on stage for, for, it, but it's becoming a reality like people you don't even expect are doing it now i want to bring up a point from our very own robin gallagher in new zealand she said both vazil from north macedonia and anna soklich from slovenia had invisible gospel choirs with anna shouting sing it to the absent singers. Something felt a bit off about all those acts and none of them qualified. Even Destiny started singing the Jemakas hook live after the lip sync looked weird in rehearsals. She's saying this can trip people up. This can trip people up. So again, that might be a motivation not to use it. What I will say is this, you know, anybody that has a go at Eurovision, I've often come back to them and say things like, with all due respect, they're live. They're 100% live. Now I won't be able to say that anymore. And you know what? I'm not quite sure how this elevates the contest in any way, shape or form. It's not always about money. If you can't compete, you know what? Come back next year. You don't have to come every year. But come back, come prepared and come to slay. I, all this, you know, you can do this, you can do this. What next? Digital war. Oh no! Is uh, you know what? What country decided that we weren't going to? Was it Portugal that said, "Okay, fine, we're not going to do that. We're going to." There's always, always something. I'm okay with this for 2022, but moving forward, no. Let's get rid of. Let's make it a hundred percent live. Give people a live show. You've taken out the orchestra anyway. Do you remember how beautiful North Melody Grand Prix was the year it brought back the orchestra for their anniversary show? Oh, girl. 
It felt expensive. Girl, it always feels expensive mm, though. I love yeah. mesh. So it's interesting. In these comments, two things are coming clear to me. <clears throat> People are repeatedly saying that what really offends them is that they're masking it behind COVID. Jonas says, I don't like this new rule, but fine. Bring it in if you want. Nobody is surprised. What really annoys me is pretending this is about COVID. And then another point that keeps coming up is, oh, this is also Jonas. I just hope we never get an Anton Ewald situation. You know those videos at Melody Festival and where, I forget who it is, but they strip out the backing vocalist and just isolate the lead singer? Oh, those videos it's are shocking. Golden. It's shocking. Who was Sigrid, the blonde lady? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's shocking. Mm. Um, but like, I like to think at Eurovision that the overall quality is much, much higher. Consistently good. It's hard to find a bad vocalist at Eurovision. It's hard. The, the, the comment earlier on about Corona, Mm. I genuinely feel this came up as a result of Corona, and I think it does address some aspect of it, but... Within a specific time within period. Within a very specific yeah. time period, and within a very specific limitation. The trouble with that is that it also makes it quite expansive. So, yeah, some delegations will be able to stay by pre-recording their backing tracks, like Vasil and Anna Sokolic, and then don't advance anyway. And then what it then does is... Others will pre-record their backing tracks and make it a lot more expansive. Sergey Lazarev doing You Are The Only One. I can imagine if that was in this era, that, that would have done better. It would be even yeah. bigger. Yeah, because I, I, my issue was that with that Tanta was always with the mix. Replay. Yeah. Can you imagine if she had to yeah. do her dub? Oh, well, speaking of which, so do you remember... I love LT Love. I love yeah, yeah, yeah. That was obviously pre-recorded backing, mm -hmm. and it was a nice effect. Mm. But, and we all knew. Oh, but that we would have been allowed knew. anyway, because Joust was allowed. He to, was. You know, to that do was, his that was, grab it, the moment. It was slightly controversial, if I recall. It was a big deal. And also, um, Polly Ganova, do you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but what I mean is that prior to this new rule coming out, those tracks would have been allowed to advance with those. I mean, these are really tiny enhancements. Yeah. But pre recorded backing track is like, Tick tock, watch your days go. She was going, all of that. Pre no, she was singing this well over. Got it going. No, no, no. I will oh. not take any shade against the Queen Alvina. She slayed. She deserved to qualify. I am not. I, oh, I not agree. She deserved to qualify. She's but my girl. This has got to go. There's well. no doubt she can sing. And as she said in our Zoom interview, she wanted to create a sensual oral experience. And how a girl did just that. Shout out to her. Shout, Shout out, out to the Eurovision Grand Final. <laughs> in any case, that's what we... Oh, wait, there is one more funny thing. Tell and me. it's not in front of me, but it was on our YouTube channel. Someone said, if this rule had been in effect in 2021, which it was, then Poland's Rafal would have qualified. <laughs> and I was like, on so many levels. So, so the commenters were I'm like... I'm trying to think, was he pre-recorded? I think he was live, actually. Oh, he was definitely live. Oh, sister, what are we talking about music? Girl, he was alive. Why? <laughs> oh, he was alive. alive. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, House of Pfizer is all up on House of Pfizer. <laughs> but listen, um, yeah, oh, yeah. You are too much. <laughs> In any case, that's what we think. But do you think, what do you feel about the pre-recorded backing vocals? Do you think this is here to stay forever and indefinitely? Let us know here on Movie Blogs. And how many of your future stars are on Pinterest? We are. So make sure you follow us. But more importantly, follow us on TikTok. Watch the days go. I'm running on a TikTok. Instagram. Facebook. And we will see you later. Bye! Bye.